Hi everyone, my name is Jason Matthew. Today I'm going to cover uh, how to use configuration wizard in Cisco WLC wireless LAN controller. So uh, what I did is uh, it's a uh, 5520 controller and I cleared the configuration and rebooted the controller and it gone into the uh, configuration wizard. The first thing what uh, WLC will try is to uh, start using the auto install feature. So I terminated that so auto install st uh, feature will automatically kick in in 30 minutes after reboot uh, if you don't have uh, in factory default. So what I did is I terminated you uh, giving a command as uh, yes the response as yes and I terminated it otherwise it will go for auto install and it will try to download the file uh, set of files uh, is uh, pre-configured on the controller side. So uh, I covered that in a separate video. So I'm not go, uh, going into the auto install feature now. So here I'm going to show you how to configure your controller using um, configuration wizard, the initial configuration. It's not a full configuration, but you can make our controller up and running and you will get the management connectivity using that. So uh, here um, I'm going to uh, start the configuration wizard. The first question in uh, configuration wizard is to give a system name. So by default it will come with Cisco under, uh, underscore uh, and the MAC address of that device. So if you want to keep that you can keep it otherwise I will uh, you can give any name. So here I am going to give Cisco WLC hyphen one. Okay so admin user you can set anything. So here I am going to put admin then password then uh, next one is the DSCP IP assignment for service port interface. So if you are planning to use uh, service port uh, to manage your controller, you can either choose uh, which option you want to use in your network. So it can be static, it can be DSCP. So I'm going to leave it as DSCP. But if you are setting it uh, static, uh, you don't have the gateway configured. So you have to add uh, another um, another uh, IP addresses. So next one is uh, link aggregation. Everybody knows that controller supports only one type of link aggregation and uh, that is mode on. If you are configuring link aggregation uh, on the controller side, then you have to configure uh, channel group mode on. Uh, that's the only thing Cisco controller understands. So you can do that. So next one is the management IP interface. So uh, let me put some valid IP subnet mask next one is your gateway next one is VLAN identifier if you are planning to use um, HA uh, in SSO mode so you uh, this uh, adding WLAN, VLAN identifier is mandatory now onwards so you have to tag your interface otherwise you can't put the uh, HSS, so it's a mandatory thing right now. So I'm um, let me put that VLAN as nine just for now. So my my network DSCP server. So if you want to enable HA, you have to mark it as yes, uh, yes. Uh, so by using this feature configuration wizard configuration for HA, that HA pairing will be done with configuration wizard itself. So once you configured HA here, it will be done in uh, with the configuration wizard and both the controllers will come and uh, join as a uh, primary secondary. So first you have to choose the um, default HA unit. So um, so I'm going to make this guy as a primary in HA. I'm selecting as primary HA here. So redundancy management IP. So I already use uh, 10. So let me put 9.11 for HA. So peer redundancy management. I'm going to use um, 12 for that so let me put that 12 here virtual gateway address 10 it's a dummy address I'm not going to so it's not available in my network um, so okay virtual gateway okay let me just give 10101 so I'll, I'll uh, put the valid one uh, later so you can put a uh, non-router interface for uh, IP address for uh, virtual gateway here multicast address uh, again depends on your network let me put this one mobility group Cisco I'll put SSID is not uh, something that we are uh, valid one here 
DACP bridging mode do you want to enable DACP bridging or not that you can select yes or no allow static IPs yes or no question configuration uh, configuring the radius server if you are uh, planning to use radius server for uh, authentication on controller side management or uh, local user or WLAN you can choose uh, your radius server here I'm not uh, putting that radius server here um, next one is country uh, so you can use any country uh, that supported by that controller so here um, by default it will be US uh, uh, depends on the shipping uh, location so what I'm uh, going to do is I'm going to put more countries here so if you want to put more countries you can select multiple countries using comma so I'm putting US India Australia here then enter so it will directly ask do you want to configure auto RF if you are using only one country then you will get an option to um, select let me go back to go back uh, in configuration wizard you can use hyphen so here I got the US right so if I press enter you can uh, get an option to select what are the um, what are the uh, radio types you want to enable but if you put uh, multiple countries like US comma India comma Australia it will directly ask for a question um, uh, uh, in the initial stage you saw that right it, it will be directly so here you can see I put multiple then it will directly ask do you want to enable auto RF or not so if you click that auto RF will be taking care of everything RRM will take care of everything but here if you put only one use uh, multiple countries it will not ask for that question it will automatically go for auto RF and uh, this is the only question you are going to get so I skipped it so now it's coming with uh, multiple options multiple options means all the RF you can select okay so I'm going there uh, so that part is done uh, next one is um, NTP server configuration so uh, if your system name is not correct and you, if you have a uh, valid NTP server NTP server in your network then you can use that NTP server IP here so that all the devices will be in sync including AP so it's a critical one uh, because if you have certificate uh, validation happening through the timing so controller and uh, uh, AP is uh, should be in proper time zone and everything so either you can use NTP server here I'm not going to use it I know my uh, system time is correct and um, if you are skipping NTP server there is an option to configure the right NTP server so I'm not going to do that sorry um, the next one is IPv6 parameters if you are planning to use this one uh, in a dual stack mode you can uh, configure this IPv6 otherwise you can skip it again so once we are done with this part these are the last these are the questions you uh, normally get it from configuration wizard after that you, ha you can choose uh, save or not save so so uh, here I'm going to save uh, so after putting that yes uh, it will clear the configuration from the switch uh, service port and it will save the configuration and it will reboot the controller so after reboot you can see that this controller is coming up with the IP addresses configured by uh, yourself like configured uh, through the configuration wizard and it will uh, come up uh, with uh, with the configuration in the configuration wizard so all the devices getting shipped from Cisco side it will be coming with the factory default so what you can do is uh, I already covered it in the other video but auto config wizard right so once you got your serial number or MAC address of that device using that serial number you can keep the same set of configuration as a file so the, that configuration file will help you to uh, just put it in your DSCP server uh, that option 150 for syslog uh, sorry uh, for TFTP and this controller will automatically uh, come up with these values so either you can go through configuration wizard and configure it manually or you can use auto install for configuration wizard and that will done automatically so this auto provisioning uh, methods are really helpful for you so you can uh, you can keep it ready in background and it can automatically come up with the required values and you will directly get the GUI or a telnet or SS, uh, telnet will not be there but yeah uh, it will be there uh, based on your configuration so uh, it's up to you so how to how to uh, use this so um, so I'm done with the configuration wizard uh, my controller is boot, uh, rebooting and it will take some time and uh, it will come up with the proper configuration whatever I did it through configuration wizard 
uh, hope this one uh, will help you to uh, use the configuration wizard next time onwards thank you for watching